Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel today and today I've got for you guys a very controversial watch. Um, if you've been a part of the watch community uh, both on YouTube and Facebook groups and forums and so on you are probably very well aware of the controversies surrounding the Ginolt uh, Ocean Rover. There are some controversies in terms of who makes it, in terms of where these watches are made, in terms of what other products those people make, um, and also some other things. In today's video I'm going to just briefly go through the watch and talk a bit about what I think about this watch and the surrounding controversy. So this watch um, I actually purchased myself uh, because I saw a very intriguing uh, sales ad for this watch on a forum and I've always wanted to check it out and so um, I got it for a pretty good price on the forums and so yeah I snagged it up and is here and I've had it now for about um, around four days or so and I gotta tell you I am thoroughly impressed. This is genuinely a fantastic watch. If you have the ability to look past the controversies surrounding the Ginolt Ocean Rover um, and if you are okay with just looking at the watch itself, the product itself, to make your decision in terms of if you want to purchase it or not, then this is a perfect watch. You know, it really is fantastic for the price. It's very hard to convey this on video, uh, but I'm going to do the best I can. So the watch, as you can see, of course, wants to look like a Rolex Submariner, and it does that very well. How do I know? Well, I have actually uh, reviewed some different Rolex Submariners in the past and I've also reviewed the uh, 214270 Rolex Explorer which has the modern oyster bracelet which this, um, I guess you could say copies, except for the clasp uh, which on this watch is uh, copied from the Submariners of uh, today uh, with the glide lock system and I will get into that soon. So first of all let's take a look at the watch itself. So yes it is I guess you could say a watch wanting to look like a Rolex Submariner and it does that very well but it doesn't really look like any Rolex Submariner watch that they have ever released. And that's because it's not a complete copy of any particular reference. What the company here has done is they have taken the elements and some DNA aspects, I guess you could say, from uh, probably their favorite uh, watches going back and put them together into one fantastic watch and that's what they have done and I love this watch so much because they have taken the right elements so they don't have the Mercedes hands they have the mill sub or the sword hands instead um, they do not have a ceramic bezel instead you have a aluminum bezel which is a very nice looking bezel I do have to say I do prefer the aluminum bezel over the ceramic bezel of the modern Submariners. The bezel action is just fantastic. It's probably one of the best bezel actions that, that I have ever experienced on any watch. And they have taken the case from the reference, I believe, 16610 and the 14060 for the no date model. And this is just the perfect case, I think, in terms of the cases that have come um, with the Rolex Submariner. 
Why? Well, the lugs, of course, as you can see, are not as wide as the new models lugs are. And the case itself, it's, it's also a bit thinner, I believe. It looks thinner. It looks better on the wrist. It looks just amazing. They have nailed the crown guards. They have nailed the bracelet. Um, man, this watch is very well made. Um, in terms of the dial here, this is uh, one of the aspects that they have taken from the modern Submariners. So what you've got here is you've got a maxi dial with the large, um, the large hour markers um, and the lacquered black, very deep black uh, dial. But of course, as I said before, in combination with the sword or the mill sub hands and with a nice red seconds hand as a nice touch. Um, I gotta say they have also nailed the crown action on the watch. It is incredibly well um, executed. The crown just feels fantastic to use. Um, it uses a very similar uh, system to the one used on the Submariner. So you can see one of the gaskets here, which is nice. And the winding, very, very smooth um, for an ETA 2824 clone. Um, I like it. The crown, very easy to operate, just the right uh, size. The crown guards, very well executed. And screwing the crown back in, very smooth, just incredibly well uh, done. So the bracelet. Uh, the bracelet is supposed to be um, the modern bracelet found on the modern Submariner, which is just a spectacular bracelet. And that's obviously why they chose to take that for the bracelet of the um, Ocean Rover. So what you've got here is of course the Oyster bracelet um, with the glide lock clasp, which to be honest with you, I gotta say I'm not a huge fan um, of the fact that they have just copied the entire clasp and just uh, skipped out on on any sort of logo or branding here. I think it looks very odd. Um, so I would have loved it even more um, if Genolt instead made their own clasp uh, design, but kept the same basic function of the clasp, which of course is um, the glide lock system, which is just just spectacular. Um, the bracelet, as you can see, is sized with screws, as it should be. It's very well made. The bracelet is finished to a high standard, I gotta say. And by the way, one of those things that I just love about this is its case. The 16610 case is, I believe, the best looking diving watch case of all time. I just love how it looks. I just love how it wears. It's great. Oh, and by the way, also, as you can see here, we have a box sapphire crystal with uh, no anti-reflective coating. And that, of course, they have taken from the previous, previous gen um, of the Sea Dweller, which also had a um, box sapphire crystal without any AR coating. So it's not only a Submariner, they have taken this aspect from the Sea Dweller. So now the movement. Uh, the movement um, inside of this watch is a controversial talking point, and that's because uh, of a few different things. Um, they are saying that they make this movement in-house, but at the same time they are very clear with the fact that this is an ETA 2824 clone, uh, which is legal. There's no legal issues in that because the ETA 2824 is uh, that old now that anybody who has uh, 
the capacity and the ability to copy it is pretty much free to do so. Uh, you of course have the Chinese companies making clones and also you have um, some Swiss companies making clones of this watch of course uh, of this uh, movement sorry uh, the Celida SW200 uh, the STP 1-11 so uh, that in of itself is not a bad thing they are claiming however that they make this thing in-house and by them saying in-house, it can point towards um, saying that this is a watch movement made in the USA and the components are made in the USA and I don't believe that um, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, my theory is that instead of them making everything in the US, what they do is um, they make the components in China or in some other Asian country where they can be made uh, cheaper but still to a very high standard and then they ship the components to the US and then they put the components together to form the final watch in the US um, because they do say right here on the bottom where it would say Swiss made hand built in America which is okay for them to say but before this in the early days of the ocean rover it said uh, handmade in the USA I, I believe which was not okay with the governments in the USA because they have some very strict rules with who can say um, that their product is entirely made in the USA uh, so that's my theory which is not a bad thing. It's just a little bit misleading. Um, but if you can look at just the product, if we can look past the discussion of homage watches, if we can look past uh, the controversy of the movement of where it's made, etc., and just look at the watch itself, its finish work, it's high standard, it's just fantastic bezel, just great. Uh, the details on the watch, the way it's been manufactured, the way it's been put together, the, the tolerances here, so tiny. It's really just an extraordinarily well put together watch. There is no denying that that is incontestable this is an extremely well made watch so if you are the type of person who does not care that much about oh it's a homage it's a copy it's a clone whatever oh it's made in china or something um, if you are okay with that and can just look at the product i gotta say i highly highly recommend this watch it is very well made for the price. Um, now the price of this watch on their website I believe is $12.99 uh, which if the brand had some heritage to it or something like that would have been just a fantastic price. Um, but now with Ginault being uh, this sort of micro brand and all that and with some of the controversy behind it I don't think $1,300 is a fair price um, but at the prices of which you can find this watch uh, lightly used for around nine or eight hundred dollars um, yes I do believe this watch is worth um, around a thousand bucks so yeah Fantastic watch. Let's put it on my wrist and I'll show you how it wears. Okay, and there we have the Ginault Ocean Rover on my 19.5 centimeter wrist. I think it just wears fantastically. It's 40 millimeter size. Um, just fantastic. The bracelet is extremely uh, comfortable, extremely well put together. The glide lock system is uh, very nice to have and uh, yeah I gotta say this watch on the wrist 
and looking at it in person it feels like it's more expensive than it is. With it being a clone of the ETA 2824, could you not just purchase, let's say, a top grade ETA 2824 movement from some sort of supplier and then go to a watchmaker and ask the watchmaker to put that movement inside of this watch? I mean, you, you, you probably could, right? And that would be uh, quite an interesting thing really and I might actually consider maybe doing that as some sort of a project in the future but now I'm just going to enjoy the watch and if you have enjoyed the video uh, please feel free to like and subscribe if you like watch videos uh, just like this one and would like to see more and with that said I want to thank you again for watching have a nice day and I'll catch you in my future videos. Bye bye.